Hey, welcome or welcome back to 4F Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, Angie, but I know you will be, and I love you. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. And if you haven't already guessed from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read it, the description. This is a palette of bingo using the Sample Beauty Immensity Palette with the beautiful Anya, also known as Pink Sweets on YouTube. So, if you want to find out exactly which colours were chosen, how this looks in glorious Technicolor, and how well or not this palette performed, then my friend, you have the best seat in the house. Grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Hey, welcome back from the intro. Hopefully that intro is in black and white. Now this is a collaboration with the gorgeous Anya, who I've collabed with many times, both in my photo inspiration collaboration series on her own and with notes. That's husband opening packages in the front room. Sorry. Thank you. Yes, I promise you won't hear me when you're recording. <sighs> so I was saying, I've collabed with her on her own and with Nona as Bitches of Eastwick on the collaboration photo series that I do and a number of other different things. And uh, recently Sample Beauty had um, a sale on, on their palettes. And I'd got the Hydrographic palette, which I used in actually a Bitches of Eastwick photo inspiration collaboration that we did. Uh, but I wanted to pick up this one, which is the Immensity palette, da -da 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 -da, which looks like this. So, pretty standard rainbow palette, as you can tell. And then I told Anya that Sample Beauty had a sale on. And she went and bought this one and the hydrographic one because she'd fallen in love with the hydrographic one when she saw me use it uh, and then I sent her a picture of this one and she's like okay yeah I'm getting that one too so we decided we would do a palette bingo so I used random.com or .org or whatever whatever it is randomized two numbers and I got this one here which is cool and this one here which is to infinity so the lemon and the lime Anya um, picked two random ones and got boundless which is this hot pink and momentous which is this gorgeous electric blue so we both have to use those four shades but then we can choose a random other shade to use to bring it up to the five shades that we're using. So, hmm. I think I'm going to go with Colossal, which is the purple here. Because, I mean, let's face it, you know me and purples. Right, uh, this is a teaching channel, so um, I do things at a speed that beginners can keep up with. Also, with my chronic pain, I can't blend as quickly as I would like to. So, if I am going too slowly for you, please do not complain. There is a speed widget up there, somewhere. Please use it. Because, sweetie, if you do speed me up, unless you tell me, I'm not going to know. Okay? 
Right. Let's get you zoomed in because I do want to just talk about um, eye shapes just before we start. Face is washed, moisturised, SPF'd and primed and I'm using my usual. Um, I actually put a pore filling primer on followed by my antiperspirant primer. Details of that are linked in the description box below. Uh, it's not an affiliate link at all, it's just an Amazon link that I hope will help you if you struggle with uh, facial sweating because of side effects from meds and chronic pain like I do. Uh, if I didn't use that, my makeup would not stay on. Right, let's get you zoomed in. I put these on because I fell in love with Anya's ones. Wouldn't it be funny if she's using these as well? <laughs> anyway, let's see me a little bit further in than that. There we go. Right, on my eyes, I've used my usual Crow and Pebble eyeshadow primer. I'm using it in shade cotton. I got um, a sample size pot first, which is basically this pot but half filled instead of full. And I think you can see just how much I've used it. I have got a backup ready for when this one runs out because I love this so much. It's not sticky, so you don't have to set it and you can blend on it straight away. You don't have to sort of tap the colour on and then start blending. So this has taken over from my MAC soft ochre paint pot it's taken over from Tarte Shape Tape or any other concealer that I would use um, I've got it in shade cotton which is pure white they do six shades two deepest shades are a deep chocolate brown and a black and the other three are varying skin tone shades so you should be able to find the colour you are looking for that will suit your needs best um, I do have a discount code with them that and all my other discount codes are listed in the description box and clearly state whether I earn from them or not. Right, eye shapes. I've got deep set eyes, which a lot of people who have deep set eyes are mistakenly informed or think they have hooded lids because we struggle and we suffer with exactly the same problem that people with hooded lids have. We get transference of shimmer onto the upper lid if we're cutting our crease we have to cut onto the upper lid rather than just through the socket and even when we're using a glitter glue we get a bare patch right through here let me explain the differences to you and little tips and tricks so that you can follow any tutorial that you see and make it work for your eye shape if you have either of those two eyes okay now when I look straight ahead with my brows relaxed, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. So I don't have hooded lids. It's only if your upper lid completely covers right down to your lashes, part or all of your lower lid, that you have a full or a half hooded eye or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Your fix for following any tutorial is to get a brush something like this or a pencil brush or a liner brush and on your static lid create a new line where you want your crease to fall. Obviously that will reduce the space between your new crease and your brow so just use slightly smaller blending brushes than the person doing the tutorial and you'll be absolutely fine. Now deep set eyes. I've also heard them called double lidded eyes recently Oh, there's proof I don't have Botox. Look at that. Wee! Full movement of forehead, including wrinkles. Lovely. <clears throat> I digress. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid space again that tucks back away in the crease. And if I do the same with the upper lid, you can see I've got lid space above the crease that also gets tucked back in. And it's those two lid spaces rubbing together that give us the same issues that hooded lids have. But we don't have hooded lids. Our fix is different. Every so often you just have to sit back and check when you're blending a colour through your crease. Sit back and relax your brows and just make sure you can just see it above your crease line. So, two different fixes for two different eye shapes. 
I want to put some colour on my lids so uh, let's get it. I'm going to start off with this Boozy Shop tapered blending brush. It is clean, it's just stained. And I'm going to go in with mm, Boundless first, which is that gorgeous hot pink. Now I haven't even swatched this palette yet. I genuinely have no idea how it's going to perform. So, wow, that looks vibrant on camera. Look at that. Ooh -wee. Let's just start plopping it on the eye. Okay. Hello pigment. Hello pigment, my old friend. You come to play with me again. <clears throat> oh yeah, if you're new to my channel, I, I tend to break into song quite a bit. Not always actual songs, usually made up. Or if they are actual songs, I normally end up singing the wrong words. Um, I'm doing little circular movements because it moves the eyelid around if you have less taut eyelids. I mean, I've lost about 13, 14 stone the last few years. Add to the fact that I'm 45 and my eyelids move. But I know 20 year olds that have the same issue with eyelids that move. So, I do circles this way going towards the nose and then reverse the direction coming back away and that just gently moves the skin around, stops you getting stripy parts. I do tend to get stripes here though because of these deep creases I've got when my eye was pulled around at the ophthalmic hospital as a kid and I sometimes struggle here and here on both eyes from dry patches to get pigment to lay down but so far this seems to be doing okay. And that's laid down really nicely. I like to leave sort of three to four mils below the top of the colour or below the brow and above the colour just so that any brow highlight shows up. I'm going to go for a more blended look today. If I'm going for a more editorial look where I have harsh edges and less blending, um, then I very often take those right up to the brow. But I mean, you can see, you can just, you can start blending straight away. I'm not putting too much pigment on the brush to start with, just to try and avoid some fallout because I get the feeling this will probably stain. Um, what does it say about pigments? It says eyeshadow palette, so I'm guessing in that case it's not pigment. Otherwise they have to specify that. Let's just check there's nothing on the outer carrier that isn't on the back of it. No. But bright colours like this do tend to stain um, and if you do have sensitive skin it might be an idea just to test it in say the crook of your elbow or the inside of your wrist for 12 hours just to make sure you haven't got any allergy to the dyes that are in it. I always sit back and check the shapes when I relax my brows because Unless you're James Charles and Photoshop your eyes, they are not symmetrical. Sometimes you have to make the shapes slightly different on one side to the other, just to make them match. But, I think I've got that pretty much spot on as it happens. As it happens, you know, that's lovely. So that pink has gone on really nicely. I'm using a microfiber cloth just to clean the brush because I find it's much more gentle on the bristles than um, a colour switch, especially if you're using natural bristles. I mean, this isn't, this is a synthetic brush, but if you are using natural bristles, it's far better to use a microfiber cloth. If you haven't got a microfiber cloth, I mean, this is one that's actually designed for taking makeup off. Um, if you don't have one of those, you can use an ordinary microfiber cloth or a flannel or a tea towel or a hand towel, anything like that that will effectively take the pigment off. Now obviously it has stained the brush, so it probably will stain your eyes. Now I'm going to go into my free choice shade, which is a colossal, which is purple. 
which happens to be my favourite colour. Actually, my wedding dress was a little darker than that. I'm just gonna... Yes, I got married in purple for those of you who are new to the channel. Now, purples and blues are the most difficult colours to create. So, I'm just going to blend this into the pink there. Which is why normally you'll see if there's a if there's a palette that's got purples and blues and greens in it, those are the most difficult colours to create. So you'll normally see me go in and use those first time I use the palette, just because I want to see how well they perform. Um, this is a little bit patchier than I would have liked, but it is buildable by the look of it. pigment's building up on itself okay but it does initially go on a little bit patchy when in my mirror it's looking a lot less patchy than it is on screen there on screen it's looking pretty rough to be honest I'm hoping that that's just my viewfinder because I've said that before and then when I'm editing it it looks absolutely fine I'm just going to buff along pink and the purple where they meet to try and blend them together a little better. I'll pop a little bit more pigment, a bit more of the purple on the brush while I'm blending it with the pink because it is tending to pull some of that purple away as I'm blending. So not the greatest of purples it has to be said. Um, you know, I've got purples in the Slush 1 and 2 palette and a Cena 2 palette that perform a lot, lot better than this one is doing. But it is building up, so it's just taking a lot more work in terms of the blending than the pink did, as you can see. But it has eventually gone okay. This worries me now for the blue. Because obviously purple is created by mixing red and blue. And as the pink went on fine, pink obviously contains red. I'm guessing it's the blue element of the purple shadow which is not behaving as nicely as the red part of the shadow so this it does worry me a little bit for the blue but uh, we will see we will see what happens when we get there And obviously I can close this side, which does make it a little bit easier in terms of blending. But uh, being blind in this eye, if I closed it, there won't be a lot happening over this side of the face. Now, normally this circular movement will stop all of this barcoding that I'm getting here. But because of those super, super deep creases I've got there, I do have to stretch my lid out a little bit. Do not do this if the circular movements work fine for you. Or you will end up with deep creasing. I can promise you, once you've got it, it doesn't go away and it only gets worse every bloody year. So, what can I say about Anya? She is, like me, she's as mad as a box of frogs. But I absolutely love the woman. She is one of my closest, closest friends that I've made on YouTube. She is very, very defensive of her friends. Any time someone says anything even slightly uh, rude or unthoughtful in your comments section, she should be one of the first people jumping on, going, how dare you, don't talk to her like that sort of thing. And that's what I love about her. She goes to battle for her friends, which is what I'm like. Um, so I, I love that sort of fiery side of her. But likewise, you know, I've, 
I've only ever heard her say something bad about one particular YouTuber. And that happens to be a YouTuber that she, I and Nona have in common. In that we were all treated rather nastily by the same YouTuber. So all of us are not exactly fond of her. So that's how the Pictures of Eastwick group started. But uh, you'll have to find the original Pictures of Eastwick film to find out the full story. But um, even though she's in America and I'm here, there's sort of, I think, six hours time difference between us. Because of my, you know, lack of sleep, because of my chronic pain, we'll very often be chatting at what is sort of ten o'clock in the evening for her and four o'clock in the morning for me. Um, we've even been known to have conversations at sort of stupid o'clock in the morning through Facebook chat. So showing each other our latest purchases sort of thing. <laughs> right, I'm just cleaning this brush off and I'm going to go for a slightly more tapered brush. Um, let's go for this one. Now this is one of my Royal and Langnickel Chic Pro brushes and this is their eyeshadow brush which although it looks just as wide it is actually more tapered so I can fit it actually no I think I'm going to go smaller than that let's grab this one this is a studio 5 pencil brush that I'm going to initially lay the colour down with and then I'm going to blend it out using this Morphe M562 very very stained from a green pigment that I used so let's go into Momentous with this Studio 5 pencil brush that I've got and let's just lay this down through the crease actually that has gone on really quite nicely but then with a pencil brush it should do to be quite honest and I'm just going to build out the corner here just a tad and now grab the Morphe M562 dip into the same shadow so I've got shadow on the brush and start blending Tiny, tiny little circles through the crease, just to soften the edges slightly, but so that we can still see the purple. Well, to be honest, it has covered quite a bit of the purple there. Never mind. And then gently buff that corner, like so. Okay, so it seems that the blue works well and the pink works well, but the purple's a little bit, hmm, which I don't understand why, because unless they've created the purple using CMYK rather than primary colours. Sorry, CMYK, like, if you've ever worked in printing, it's cyan, yellow, magenta and then black, which is the order that you print them on a full colour press. Um, you can create pretty much any colour, including black, using a combination of those four. And I'm wondering if perhaps the purple has been made using a combination of CMYK rather than using primary red and primary blue because that could explain why it's not behaving as well as the blue and the pink did there you go, a little bit of technical stuff for you there as well and yes, I used to work for a print company I've held many many jobs in my time if you want a story time on all the different jobs I've had 
then let me know and I will at some point film them when they get ready with me. And if there's any other questions you've got about the tattoos or my eye being blind or anything like that, let me know. And uh, I'll get a set of them together and uh, do a get ready with me. Okay. I always get more fallout on my left eye because of the skin being that much looser that side. So I'm just going to go in with a micellar water on a pad and just neaten up the outside edge on both sides. Oh look at this. So, Right, let's grab So I've been moving everything around because I've got new storage bins So trying to find things at the moment is interesting because I've moved everything around and it's not where I normally keep it I'm going to do a cut crease today So I'm going to grab my Tarte Shape Tape and this is a number 10 brush, it's a nail brush used for doing acrylic but I love it because look how thin it goes down it's perfect for doing cut creases and I'm going to show you a foolproof way of doing a cut crease regardless of your eye shape I'm going to start off by loading this brush with concealer put the lid back on before I drop it and then I'm going to I'm going to grab a little mirror so I can look down so I can see what I'm doing in this eye. Run it along the edge and the inner crease. And then open my eye and blink a few times. And you can see it smudges the colour onto the upper lid, showing me exactly how far up I need to cut the lid. And this will work regardless of your eye shape. So it is a great, great tip if you're not sure on how far up to cut your crease. Sorry, this takes a little bit of concentrating. I'm going to take it to about there because I want to keep some of that blue on the outside I'm aware that I've probably pretty much completely covered the purple so I'm probably going to pop some purple on the lower lash line instead I'm just spreading that across and what I'm going to do I'm going to clean the rest of the concealer off of the brush and I'm very lightly just going to press the brush against the concealer because what this will do is it will pick up any excess concealer that will be mixing in with the eyeshadow. Okay. I'm now going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. If the film starts getting too long, I may speed up doing the cut crease this side. Um, I'll try not to, I'll try to leave it as is because obviously it is a training film, but likewise, I don't want it to be. 
an hour and a half long. So again, start from the edge, go up to the middle of the socket, relax your brows, blink a few times, and it shows you exactly how high up you have to go to cut your crease. Let's just reload the brush, the concealer. Where did the red brick road go? That's what I want to know. When she starts off on the yellow brick road, right at the start, it's interwound with the red brick road. And I want to know where the red brick road goes. I was always a contrary child. My mother used to call me that frequently. She used to use my first two names and then say quite contrary. Like the Mary Mary quite contrary nursery rhyme. Yeah. Can't tell you how boring that got by the time I was eight. I'd heard it many, 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 many times. So, again, cut the crease area, leaving some of the blue. I think I've gone a little bit too far, but never mind. Clean the brush and then lightly press it. over the area to pull off any excess that would end up mixing with the eyeshadow that we're going to be putting on top. Like so. I always keep the little um, plastic sheaths, for want of a better word, for these. Because where they're in a pot with a lot of other brushes, it just stops them from getting splayed out. And now I'm going to use the number 14 from that set. I've got a set of about six of them, I think, for five quid on eBay. It's ridiculously cheap. Uh, don't know, just leave on the sofa for a minute. Okay. Sorry, that was Harvey asking me a question. I'm nearly done by the way. Oh, awesome, well done. I'll just sort of neatly stack everything at the end of the sofa again. Oh, smart. Cheers, darling. Okay. Right, so I'm going to pick up Core initially, which is that gorgeous, almost like an acid lemon yellow. And I'm going to start off by just pressing this into the concealer and I bring that about halfway across the Maybe less than halfway. Across the, uh, the cut crease that I've done. Hmm. Right now this side, I'm going to have to stretch the lid out. Otherwise, it will all settle in the creases in that inner corner and it will look an absolute 
mess because as I open and close my eye through the day it'll all just start cascading down my face where it's loosely packed into the crease rather than being firmly pressed in like I'm doing now. Don't do this unless you absolutely have to. As I said before with the blending. So again, just pressing the yellow in. buffing with the tip of the bristles just to make sure we've got an even blend I have to do the same this side add a wee bit more on there's no more on is uh, Welsh for carrot Thought I'd share that thought with you. Now, obviously, I've got hella fallout here, but that's to be expected when you're putting pigment straight on like that, which is why I do my base afterwards. Now I'm going to go into and to infinity. Oh, this is clever. This green is to infinity and the next one is called and beyond. It's very clever. But this is the citrus green. Love, love, love this. And as before, I'm just going to press it into the concealer. This is what I like about these brushes, they go so thin when you, you know, condense them like this. They are great when you're doing a cut crease. Because you can be so precise with them. And then after you've got the pigment all patted on, The bristles are light enough just to sort of drag from the yellow onto the green to blend the two without actually removing the pigment. That's so pretty. Going off screen. This is the only problem doing a cut crease. I'm so busy concentrating what I'm doing, I forget to check that I'm actually in screen. Which will probably annoy the heck out of me when I'm editing this. So if it's annoying you watching it, just know that it annoyed me a million times more when I was editing it. some of the yellow onto the green and then the green back across onto the yellow just to get a nice blend going between the two. I might add a little bit more yellow this side actually just to get that blend a bit Okay. Right, I'm going to pause you while I put some foundation on, etc. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look. So, you will see me instantly. I will see you at the very next time that I press the record button. So please don't go anywhere.
Hey, I'm back. As you can see, I had a little bit of a play while I was away. As well as putting my foundation on, I grabbed, I've got one of those Suva Hydro Liners in silver. And just to neaten it up, to use the Hydro Liner, you literally just wet the top of it. And then I used a fine brush like this, dipped it in, and just followed the edge of the cut crease both sides just to neaten it up and then decided to also use it to give myself silver brows but not entirely sure I like them but I've done them now so uh, I'm not taking them off and doing them again it's simple as this is gonna have to do but right so I'm gonna grab this brush that I showed you earlier and I'm gonna go back into the purple because I pretty much covered it with the blue to be honest and I'm going to run the purple along the lower lash line. Like so. What you can hear in the background is Harry putting his boots on because he's about to go and mow the lawn. I always flinch doing this side because obviously being blind in it I don't have any peripheral vision so I'm relying on muscle memory and a viewfinder quite a long way away when you haven't got a contact lens in to not poke myself in the eye and regular viewers will be able to tell you just how frequently I fail and poke myself in the eye right the next brush I'm going to grab is actually from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette the Swamp Queen palette they did. I love it because it's flat on the top but it's chunky. So it gets up under your bottom lashes really, really nicely. Um, and I'm going to grab, um, I think, a little bit of the pink. Just a little bit of that boundless. And I'm just going to use that to gently buff that bottom lash line out. Just to soften it a bit and make it a little bit more grungy if you can call hot pink grungy uh, the same thing this side buff the lower lash line out again I'm flinching can't help it sorry I really like that hydro liner I might have a look and I got it when Beauty Bay had a sale on, so next time they have a sale I may pick up some other colours. But a lot of the time if I want a, a wafty coloured eyeliner I'll just use one of the Jeffrey lipsticks because they're all eye safe anyway. So, And I have many, many, many of them. Right, this, believe it or not, is a lip brush that I bought from eBay probably 10 years ago now-ish. And I am going to grab, which one shall I grab? I think as we've gone... So we've got pink samplers, so I can't really use either of those. Right, I'm going to grab my Nikki Ofra Tutorials in its original black packaging glazed donut highlighter. This is by far the best white highlighter I have ever used. It even outperforms Jeffrey's Ice Cold. Oops, got that little bit on the pink, never mind. Just run that along under the brow. Yeah, that definitely would have worked better if I got darker brows. I may darken the brows up when I'm off camera. You'll have to see at the end. And then in a corner and I'll run it along under the tear duct like so. Just because I think that works nicer with my eye shape. 
Right, I'm going to pause you while I go off camera and chuck this highlight everywhere else. Um, put some mascara on, decide what I'm going to do with my brows. I haven't quite decided whether to leave them silver or not. Put a lipstick on and I'll be back with my finished look. So, don't go anywhere now. I'm back. As you can see, I decided to change the brows. Uh, I left the silver pomade, the silver hydro liner on and I just went over it with a brown pomade. Uh, which actually I quite like because it still has that glistening effect but you can still see the highlight better so oh, it's an experiment I tried that didn't work um, again I use the glazed donut highlighter everywhere mascara is my my usual favorite Catrice Glam and Dole waterproof volume mascara this is an absolute dupe for bad girl bang but it's cheaper and it's waterproof. Well, I believe um, Benefit have now bought out the waterproof version of Bad Girl Bang. And the lippy is a Jouer Longwear Lip Cream in the shade Charmed. Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, it's a really nice sort of dusky rose, which I just thought complemented nicely with the really, really bright eyes that I've got going on. Hey, darling. It's hubby just coming in the back door. So there we go. This is my final look with the Immensity palette. With the palette bingo, where four shows were randomly chosen and the fifth one we got to choose for ourselves. So, what do you think? Would you have done a look like this or would you have done something different given the shades? What? I'm just going to show you the palette again. Hopefully my lights aren't washing the colours out too much. Now obviously these two we had to use and then this one and this one we had to use. But out of the other shades, which one would you have chosen as your wild card? Let me know in the comments box below because I'd be interested to know whether you would have gone for the purple or would you have gone for an orange or the other blue? Let me know. Right, if you're a member of my 4F family, please double check you're still subscribed because YouTube are still unsubscribing people at a rate of knots against their wishes. And once you've checked that and clicked like, maybe left me a teeny comment and possibly even shared the... Uh, Hello. Sherry is scary. I'm going to need you to go over to Anya's channel and find out exactly which colour she has chosen as her world card and what her look is like. Now, Anya does very editorial looks, so she has very stark lines between the colours. There's less blending, they're super, super powerful editorial artistic looks. So, I'm going to need you to go over there, say hi from the 4F family, and uh, just be as nice to her as you always are to me, please. If, however, this is your first time here, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed the slight waffling and nuttiness that abounds on this channel. If you got this far through, I'm guessing you liked it just a little bit maybe, just a little bit. Did you like it enough to hit that subscribe button for me? And ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all notifications so that you get told every time I upload another one of these films. Right, that's quite enough for one day. All that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.